Yo, hello everybody, how are you? Um, my name is Mario Ibarra Jr. I'm an artist here in Los Angeles, California. Uh, more specifically in a place called Wilmington, California, which is the port area of Los Angeles. Uh, I live and work here and kind of have been a native of this area my whole life. Um, and this is uh, the unsubscribe to the cult of busy uh, video. First of all, uh, before I begin, you know, in these times, um, I wanted to read a short statement. This statement is not written by myself. It's written by an artist named Arnaldo Vargas. Arnaldo Vargas is a longtime friend, uh, but he's an artist educator and the advanced placement uh, photo and art teacher at Phineas Banning High School. Uh, where both he and I went to school. And he was one of the leaders of the UTLA uh, strike uh, by the UTLA union, teachers union, last year. Um, and I wanted to read these words uh, by Arnold for us. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge the original people of the lands we all inhabit. I want to thank them for the teachings of harmony and peace uh, they have left us. We find ourselves in the midst of the most challenging time. We are not fighting for the survival of our family. We are not only fighting for the survival of our families and communities from the worldwide pandemic, but we continue to witness and experience senseless, senseless murders at the hands of law enforcement, and white supremacists throughout the country. I would like to pay my respect to George Floyd, who was murdered in Minneapolis. And may we continue to practice social distancing while staying spiritually connected. And on that note, I'd like to take a moment of silence. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that moment of silence. And again, I hope uh, this message finds you well in this time of, of social change, in this epistemic shift, in this time of renewal that we are going through right now as a culture uh, and as a world. Uh, there's a lot to reflect on this time, and uh, I'm very uh, thankful that I get to address you and and spend some time with you today. Uh, I would also like to thank Creative Capital for inviting me. Uh, I'm a Creative uh, Capital grantee from 2008. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure to be involved with Creative Capital and I hope the rest of the Creative Capital family out there uh, the best. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you about today is this thing that's been on my mind for a while in relationship to art artist wellness. Um, you know, I'm like all, most of you been on the traditional artist track where I went to art school and uh, I was put uh, this kind of objective in front of me that was kind of singular, you know, the singular objective of of the model of success being that I worked with museums and gallery and galleries and art institutions in a traditional manner. And uh, I, I have to tell you that I really bought that uh, methodology hook, line and sinker. Uh, to my betterment and then also to my detriment. And uh, the cult of busy is a culture that I've seen the artist, uh, senior artists, when I remember being in school and seeing when artists would be at openings and greeting each other or at events, they would always tell each other, instead of asking each other, how are you? They would always go into this, what are you working on? 
to 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 kind of get to the point that your validation and your success is only based on what you're working on, not how you're doing. And I always felt that that was that always kind of struck me wrong because, um, I, you know, it just didn't sit right with me. Um, you know, so what is the cult of busy? The cult of busy is something that I feel we've been on this kind of spinning wheel as artists for a long time, you know, I'm guilty of it too. You know, I, I'm always, uh, as an overachiever and as an artist, I always felt that I have to be working on something new and something exciting that I could share with people. And that's been my only mode of kind of acknowledging that I have value, right? That what am I currently working on? What am I doing? So the cult of busy, I was thinking about it as an abbreviation for the culture of business, right? In this late kind of capitalist time, we are kind of participating in what we are, what I am calling at least, uh, the culture of busy, the cult of busy. Uh, the cult of busy sounds a little bit uh, more provocative because when you're reminded of a cult, you're thinking of things like a character a charismatic leader that leads these uh, his congregation astray, kind of Jim Jones. You know, you totally drink the Kool-Aid and you have this mass uh, murder based on, you know, what this uh, person has has kind of given to them as doctrine that they buy hook, line, and sinker. Uh, so the culture of busy, the cult of busy, you know, this, this COVID kind of crisis has kind of given me time to reflect on this because I feel that I, even though I've been at home and not running around on airplanes, uh, not running around town to see all the exhibitions and all the openings, all these things that are kind of uh, the spinning wheel of what we do in our culture of business of the art world, quote unquote, which, you know, we all know and, and I'll argue that there's no one singular art world, right? There are art worlds uh, that we participate in and we like to kind of uh, seam them up by calling them the art world. But there is no such thing as the art world. We live in a poly-sided adventure, right? It, it, it isn't mono. And I feel that this mono mentality is what has put us in this kind of culture of business in this cult of busy, a busy that has really uh, affected a lot of things. One, our, our production, because if you're going on planes and flying around the world and doing all these types of things and uh, knocking out dates for art fairs to participate in, you're not necessarily in a deep uh, mode of production or thought in your studio. You know, sometimes, you know, it the life of an artist is kind of solitary, you know, and to have that solitary moment and to have that time to mull over is important. Uh, so I wanted to kind of set that up. That's what I'm thinking of as the cult of busy, the culture of busyness. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, give myself an intro as well, right? So uh, who I am, I'm Mario Ibarra Jr. I'm an artist from Los Angeles. I participated in the 2000 Whitney 8 2008 Whitney Biennial. I've exhibited at the Tate Modern. I've exhibited at the LA MOCA, the LACMA, uh, most major institutions around the United States and uh, a lot of institutions in Europe. I was very fortunate uh, at an early, early on in my career to be part of an exhibition called The Uncertain States of America curated by Daniel Birnbaum and uh, Hans Obrist. Uh, and uh, started at the Astrid Fernley Museum and uh, it toured throughout Europe. So I was really, really lucky to kind of go on this kind of uh, tour with a lot of generation, my generation, artists from my generation. Uh, and um, I've also worked with galleries in New York. I've worked at galleries in Los Angeles. And right now I'm, I'm not currently working with any gallery. Um, what I do... What I do is, uh, in 2002, my wife, Carla Diaz, and I, and a couple of other friends, we founded a studio in the neighborhood I grew up in uh, here in Los Angeles called Slanguage Studio. Slanguage Studio was our studio, a place for us to work, but it also became a de facto kind of artist uh, project space and a de facto art school where we took on mentees, young artists from the community, and helped them develop their artistic approaches, right? Um and like I said, I, I'm here in Los Angeles, uh, specifically in Wilmington, California. Here we don't call it Wilmington because it's an old school Mexican-American neighborhood. So we call it Wilmas, right? Uh, Wilmas is the hood. Uh, 
How do I do it? A lot of people are asking me, how do I do it? I don't know how I do it. I do it on sheer energy, sheer determination, hook or crook. Uh, I, I, I'm also very fortunate to be benefit of kind of navigational capital that was provided me by my teachers. You know, I went to art school. I went to both Otis College of Art and Design and I went to UCI and I studied under some people that took me on as a mentee and really provided me a platform for me to have early career development um, and I worked my ass off, right? Uh, it's kind of how I do it. I, I don't know why, other just a sheer determination and, and pit bull uh, jaw grip on it, right? Why do I do it? I do it because I feel like I really needed to break a kind of four minute mile in my community. Like a lot of artists coming out of the Mexican American community in Los Angeles were relegated to certain types of exhibition spaces and certain types of exposure. And uh, I really wanted to break that. I really do want to make wanted people to know that our capacity and our understanding and our levels of production could reach the heights in what we are calling now a contemporary art moment. And I was able to do that. So, and then for who my audience is, everybody really like, particularly I'm thinking about younger cats and younger artists when they're growing up and kind of coming into uh, their understanding of being an artist. I really want them to understand that there's a model. Uh, you got to see it to be it. If you can't see it, if you can't see it out there, if there's nobody out there in the field doing it, it's very difficult for you to attack it. Uh, and understand where to approach it. And uh, I do that because I feel like I have broken a kind of four minute model uh, for the mile. And I and I see the generation coming after me just going gangbusters after that, right? Um, so I'm really proud of them. Uh, what is the cult of busy again? I wanted to kind of give you guys an analogy back to the cult of busy, the culture of business. And when artists first see each other, the first thing they always say to each other is, oh, what are you working on? And I, I really feel like this is really toxic for us. And uh, I was reminded when I was a child, I was a child um, with going to my grandmother's house uh, in San Pedro, California. And I remember her, you know, old school uh, Mexican abuelita going into her garden and, you know, kind of classic looking over the fence at the neighbor lady and them two kind of coming together and at the at the at the wall and they would ask each other, como estas? Right. Like, how are you? And oh, man, as a little boy, I would like kind of oh, like sigh and kind of think, oh, man, I should go. I shouldn't have come out. I should go back to the house. But no, like they would go into it. Oh, que me duele mi espalda. Like, oh, my back hurts. Oh, I got to go to the doctor next week. Oh, my son is doing this. His, my daughter-in-law did this. Like, you know, they would really go into a kind of sharing moment. Maybe a little bit too much information for my like little boy ears. But for each other, they really found a kind of connection um, for kind of an, an empathetical moment with each other. Uh that was different from what I see the kind of culture of busy doing where the culture of busy, you ask somebody or another artist, uh, oh, what are you working on? Essentially, that's just a prompt to kind of give uh, ear service to what they're working on so that you could wait your turn to tell them what you're working on to one up them, so to speak, which I don't feel is very uh supportive at all i feel it's kind of very toxic for us because we're just kind of this in this one upmanship uh cult of busy culture which i don't feel is is uh what we need to be carrying into the future of this new epistemic time right with this uh where i wrote this um note down here where we're carrying on kind of tactical empathy a real kind of proactive empathy for each other where we really do have a concern for how you're doing because believe it or not if if somebody is not doing well physically mentally emotionally they're not going to be doing well in terms of like what they're doing for art it's going to be something's going to be off kilter with that so we need to kind of understand in this uh tactical empathetic moment right and into the future how we can employ these kind of proactive strategies for engaging with each other does that make sense um, yeah, like my grandmother talking to the neighbor lady, like they really did have a kind of empathy for each other in terms of understand, of wanting to understand what each of them were going through so that they could understand how to best help each other, how to provide resources for each other, et cetera, et cetera. And that's one of the things I think we really need to implement in terms of art culture and artist culture. 
you know, during this COVID time, we've been hearing a lot the, of the term pivot, you know, pivot. And I think people have a misunderstanding of pivot. Like pivot is not this thing where you have to make a three, uh, yeah, 180 degree turnaround in relationship to like what your actions are. No, pivot is just like a slight adjustment, right? A slight adjustment. It's not like this whole turnaround. So as we pivot and as we, we learn to engage with each other at different levels, understanding how are you? How are you as a human being? And wanting to develop, to develop what I'm putting down here as kind of tactical empathy or proactive proactive empathy is not something that we have to totally change within the cult, uh, uh, culture of being an artist. We already check in with each other. It's just a matter of understanding, like, do you really care about what their projects are first or how the person is doing first? And that's one of the things that I wanted to really kind of uh, push forward within this message. You know, just like the grandma. So we do these kind of, you know, I would always just think, oh, here comes the chisme time. You know, when I would see my grandmother speaking with the neighbor lady, that chisme means gossip in Spanish. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't just about gossip. It was about checking in. So if we, as we do these kind of proactive check-ins, like I really think that we could uh, shift and unsubscribe to like the culture of busyness or the culture of business, just checking in on the business first and let's shift to checking in on the person, the artist first, right? You know, I have a couple of, uh, during COVID time, I've been making this kind of journal or uh, Instagram uh, video journal where every day I've been trying to check in with myself first because I need to know what's going on with me. And then with the people that are visiting me on my Instagram page, Right. And most of the people that check in with me uh, beyond my friends and family are the arts community, you know, like my students, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I was thinking about that beyond a proactive or a tactical empathy that we could employ with other people, uh, with other artists, with the shifting or the pivotal shift from what are you working on to how are you doing? Uh, I was also thinking that one of the other proactive strategies uh, into the future or things that we can employ, and I've been trying to also do this during COVID time, is uh, proactive check-ins with people. Um, one of the things that I find is kind of also toxic is we are kind of uh, really delusional in relationship to like how the arts works. Uh, you know, you hear these stories of that person was discovered. Oh, they discovered, the agent discovered Marilyn Monroe at a soda fountain counter in Hollywood. Or, oh, they discovered the band. Or, oh, this actor was doing something and they were discovered. But we all know that that's kind of delusional and kind of in the realm of fantasy. It's kind of like the Cinderella story for us. But that's not usually how it works. Relationships are the fundamental glue that hold together any community, right? Like relationships and not only just relationships in a kind of uh, tick for tack way, but in a reciprocal way, right? Like you check in with me, I check in with you. We, we're, we're like the, the lady next door to my grandmother checking in with my grandmother and, and you know, vis-a-vis. We need to be checking in with each other. We can't just be waiting. Oh, the person's going to check in with me. I'm going to be discovered. That's not how it works. In terms of reciprocity, you need to be kind of the aggregate generator of like how people are going to have relationships with you and how you're going to have relationships with them. Does that make sense? Um, so one of the things that is really important for me in my practice is to have a proactive communications day. You know, just like I would schedule in any other thing, uh, you know, from studio time to uh, email time, all, all the kind of, uh, you know, quote unquote, uh, business work that we do as artists, proactively chunk in some communication time, make it part of what you do as an artist. Uh, you know, I wrote down here, you know, I, I, I do it maybe once every couple of weeks, I'll go down my text list and I'll check in with my sister, my mom, my cousins, et cetera, et cetera. But I also check in with the curators I've worked with, the other artists I've worked with, my mentees, my students, uh, you know, via Instagram, just a little check in, how you doing, what's up, da da da. And you usually find out that people have things to give back to you. Like I've, I've, I've received all kinds of uh, gifts in terms of time and and ideas and books and all these things just from a kind of a, a consistent check-in stay consistent it's not always a oh when you need something people are going to be like oh, okay this person hit me up because they need something you don't want to be that person but you know a consistent checking in with people is important you know like i said again 
like you would with your parents or whoever else in your family, kids. So you got your friends, your family, other artists, curators, historians, students. Um, and at this point, you know, I've been taking on this moniker that I heard the other day from uh, Dalila, who's another uh, artist that I'm in a committee with. And um, she brought up the term yelder. And I was, at first I was like, what's a yelder? I didn't know what that was. I thought, oh, a yelder is like a person that yelled all the time. She said, no, 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 that's not a yelder. A yelder is a young elder. And I was like, oh, wow, cool. Like, I'm feeling that. You know, I don't want to be called a yelder, a elder yet, but a yelder, I'll take that on. Um, the other fun thing that I kind of uh, heard or this new terminology uh, over the past few weeks checking in with people was the term friend tour. I heard that from Sarita, one of our mentees who's doing great and all over the place and just wrote a book, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, a friend tour, like, can we be friend tours to each other? Is it always, is it always that, oh, we got to be on the same level? No, some people have different information that we don't have. And to take that on and to learn from them is fantastic. So these two words have been great. The elder, the young elder, and the friend tour, the friend mentor, right? Like, those, those are great. And as a place, as a dude that founded a place called Slanguage, uh, I love these kind of new things. And as we go through this new epistemic shift, uh, you know, all this language is changing around. You know, I think it, it started a few years ago with the pronouns. You know, we were starting to get down to like uh, preferred pronouns. And that was, and now we're getting to these other words that are entering our lexicon and our vocabulary. And uh, I really like these two that were introduced to me, you know, in my check-ins, uh, Yelder and Frentor, right? Come on. Um, yeah, so, so make sure we're doing this. Let's make sure that we're in uh, not just a cult of busy, where we're subscribing to the culture of business, where we're lacking a kind of a tactical empathy with our friends and family and other artists and the folks and uh, another word, art industry. Oh, that broke my heart when I heard it. But we're in an industry, you know. Hey, it is what it is. So let's check in with the folks in our industry, right? The art world, the art community, the art industry, right? Um, and, you know, one of the last things I want to kind of sum up you know, besides unsubscribing to the culture of business, the other thing that I think is really uh, toxic is a kind of real level of toxic competitiveness that we have in relationship to uh, our arts community. Like, we got to let that go. We got to celebrate each other. You know, there's really is, if we're going to think about this kind of uh, late capitalism and its dissolve, uh, we really got to let go of this one-upmanship. We really got to let go of like the the myth of genius in terms of like everything is this original idea and we're somehow like blessed and we manifest what like our individualness has um, inspired. No, nah, man, like think everything comes from everything, right? Like I grew up in hip hop culture. So like, you know, the sample, turn it into something else you know, flip it into something new. Essentially, that's what we're doing today with the internet and everything that we're looking at. Essentially, we're sampling, remixing, turning things into something new. So there's no need to keep this kind of a myth of genius and individuality uh, flowing, right? Where we're, we put it into like this toxic competitiveness that is not helping anybody. So let's celebrate each other. It's important to celebrate each other, man. You see your people, your home team, your homies uh, doing great things. Let's celebrate each other. You know, uh, the other day I saw this meme that said, let's gas each other up. It's free, right? Like, let's, let's, let's rah, rah, says kumba. <laughs> really? Um, if you see your friend, artist friend, your friend in the community doing great things, no need to play or hate facilitate right celebrate let's celebrate each other um that is just super important in relationship to where we are today uh the culture of business the cult of busy we need to let go of we need to get into this place where we're celebrating our community celebrating other artists and folks in our community as opposed to um you know, throwing salt and trying to, you know, bring people down. We really need to try to celebrate each other. And that's, I know it's hard, you know, it's hard to do. But with practice, we'll get better at it. So 
with your best friend, start there. Start with the people in your immediate circle. How do you start um, making them feel better about themselves and celebrating them? Then you work your way out into the ripples of like the bigger community. But let's start there. Let's start with the immediate circle in terms of celebration and let go this kind of culture of, oh, I got to one up you. Oh, if my project's not better than yours. Oh, if I don't have a bigger audience. Oh, if I didn't sell up something for more than yours. That is not serving us today. It's, it's not serving us in any way. So, um, yeah, man, all that kind of stuff, right? I feel like that's uh, the things that I've been thinking about and trying to practice is letting go of the cult of busy, letting go of the culture of busy, uh, really trying to do the how are you's and listen, right? Listen and try to be empathetic with the people's responses. Uh, be tactical with my empathy. Be proactive with my check-ins, my communication, not just waiting around for people to contact me, but to reach out, let the people know that you're inspired by and that you care about that. Hey, how are you? What's going on? Right. How are you doing? You know, just checking in. Hope you're doing well, especially in this time. We're going to kind of isolate it. Um, that goes beyond just like our friends and immediate family known to our artist circles because they do become like our kind of surrogate families, you know. Also, these two wor words that I really like and I would like for you to think about, uh, you know, the elder, the young elder, and uh, the friend tour, the friend mentor, right? You know, and then in this social media world, it's really easy to help each other, or celebrate each other, share a post, uh, put it in your stories, comment, you know, 100s, you know, hand claps, you know, the little hands and yay, you know. Let's really encourage each other that in the culture, just that little infusion will be great for each other, right? And, um, you know, remember, listen, not just waiting your turn to talk, but try to listen as best you can. Again, uh, thanks again uh, for your time. Thanks again for listening to me. Uh, again, I'm Mario Ibarra Jr. You could find me on Instagram at Mario underscore Ibarra underscore Jr. Or you could follow our studio, Slanguage Studio on Instagram, also on Facebook. Uh, if you ever have any questions for me, uh, no problem. Send me a DM. Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Creative Capital for the time and space to address y'all and talk about this unsubscribing to the cult of busy. It doesn't serve us. And um, thanks again, man. And like I always say, I'm a post. Stay creative. Stay in communication. Peace.